We can now introduce our uh, model for the exploitation of a renewable resource. Uh, we focus on the fish industry, but of course it can be any industry, such as uh, forestry, for instance. The dynamic of the fish stock is uh, described by, uh, so it's described in discrete time. We could perfectly well do it in continuous time as well. So uh, the, at time t, the stock of fish is going to be capital S uh, index t. So that's the total number of fish, uh, say, in the ocean of, or fish that we care about uh, fishing. Of course, uh, if we let that population of fish uh, grow forever, or if, if humans uh, weren't around, then they wouldn't grow infinitely. They would reach some kind of uh, steady state. Uh, and uh, in ecology, we call that the carrying capacity of the ecosystem. It's a function of how large the ocean is, how many, uh, how much uh, resources there to for fish, fishes to eat, for instance. And we denote it by capital K. Now, the natural growth of the fish stock is uh, what we call a logistic map. It is tau of st, so that's the number of new fish uh, at time t, or at any time, basically it's a function of the stock of fish I have, equal to r times st, that multiplies 1 minus st divided by k. Um, so uh, RST here is basically the new num uh, the new uh, fish of springs that would uh, occur if we didn't have any uh, limit on the ecosystem. So if the fish population was very very low, so that's uh, an R is just a constant here that multiplies ST. And what happens? Well, uh, the, the problem is that. Once the fish uh, population gets too large, then it's uh, it cannot grow uh, as much as it could before. So there is this retroaction here that that takes place. This one minus st over k, uh, which uh, basically limits uh, the tot the the amount of fish that can be born. Now, one uh, detail I have to point out is that r here is said to be between one over k and three over k. Normally, I could have written, for, for instance, r times st divided by k, but this is really just to simplify the notation later on, because we, you get uh, quadratic terms everywhere otherwise. Why 1 and 3? So if you can try it on, uh, say, your calculator, tar start with some uh, value and uh, so for k and for s, and uh, use a r that's lower than uh, than uh, one over k, then you realize that uh, fishes just don't reproduce fast enough, and they die. Out. The population dies out, disappears. If it's over three k, three over k, then uh, it has uh, so the growth rate of the population is or the growth of the population is very fast, and you can get weird uh, thing uh, going on with uh, the dynamic with uh, multiple uh, values for the equilibrium. We don't want to deal with that. But uh, for the math nerds out there, I uh, sincerely recommend uh, you dig into this uh, logistic map and uh, especially look on the internet for Feigenbaum's constant. It's a fascinating topic and uh, it's linked to the mandel lorat set and uh, it's extremely, uh, it's one of the most interesting uh, constants in, ma in mathematics. All right, so that's it for uh, for, for now. Uh, so let's uh, just uh, continue by just uh, asking ourselves. So just think in your head, what would be, for instance, tau of zero? Yeah, that's an easy one. So uh, you substitute s by 0, and you get that it's r times 0 multiplied by this, so it's equal to 0. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if my fish stock is 0, then I don't have any uh, fish eggs or fish of springs, so it, it can't grow, so that makes uh, total sense. And now another one, tau of k, what would that mean? Yes, uh, the same, uh, the same, uh, the same thing. Here I would get a very, uh, very m many uh, offsprings, but 
uh, if I'm at k here, then I get 1 minus k over k, so 0. So I'm at ca carrying capacity, so it means that f too much, uh, too many fishes die off and uh, the population is maintained and the growth of the fish stock is still 0. So the uh, so to have a positive growth, I, ne I need s to be between 0 and k. So here I have the drawing. So you see that uh, this this is uh, what happens. So if you start with a very small population, then your growth is small, and then you can uh, the more you act, you your fish population grows, then the faster they reproduce because this is delta s. So the faster s goes up until this uh, this maximum there. That's a perfect uh, balance between the uh, how large the uh, capital, uh, the, capital <laughs> the fish stock is and how many fishes uh, reproduce uh, and the carrying capacity but then as you uh, approach k then again uh, you um, you you decrease uh, until you get to k and then you don't grow so um, now let let us just think for a while uh, how many steady states uh, do I have in this uh, in this model, uh, just as a reminder, a steady state is, well, first of all, I could ask how many uh, state variables do I have? What are they? State variable is what allows me to describe everything that's going to happen in the future. And here there is really only one state and it, it's, uh, it's a neat th thing that the letter is S. So, S is the only state variable uh, because that's the only thing that will change here. So it's the stock of fish. And how many steady states do I have? Well, I've already written the, the answer uh, up there. I have two. I have zero and I have key. So if I have zero fish, then I don't grow. But if I have k fish, I don't grow anymore. And if I'm in between, then I have a positive growth, so S is going that way. Okay, so um, just uh, as a, an, uh, for instance, uh, what uh, this would mean also is uh, if, for, uh, if you have a very slow growing population, like for instance, uh, forests, it's easy to plant trees, but it takes a long time for real, for the all the ecosystem to come back. So we would represent this by R that is close to uh, one over K. But if you had some ecosystem that could recover very quickly, so it would mean that there's a large R. So it, I don't know, it could be the well, if you have a fish population that uh, grows very quickly, like small fishes, then they can. Uh, they can come back very quickly if you let the system uh, by itself. So this is the fish, uh, the fish uh, population. Now let's go to the fish industry. So let's make a bunch of assumptions. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's say it costs C to rent uh, for a fisherman or a fisherwoman uh, to rent a boat. And here uh, C uh, includes all foregone income from other activities. So it's really an opportunity cost. So what could I, uh, I earn if I did something else outside of fishing? Then this is all I have to sacrifice to uh, and rent my fishing boat to start fishing today. Um, each uh, uh, boat catches one small fraction of the total stock of fish. So this fraction is alpha, because of course, if you if we are at the word level, then uh, one fish, uh, one fishing boat shouldn't catch uh, half of the fishes in uh, one day. Uh, the number of uh, so yeah, alpha and c, by the way, are constants uh, because they are just set by the model. Uh, on the contrary, here uh, there is uh, the number of uh, boats that are rented, say uh, today, 
it's going to be a return in capital B. And this, of course, is not a constant. So it's something that's going to be endogenously uh, determined in the model. Uh, the price level for fishes is small p. Uh, so just as a quick, uh, quick question, if you remember your macroeconomics. So if the market price is always p, what does that mean for, uh, for the elasticity of demand? Yes, demand is uh, infinitely elastic. If, if I want to sell a fish, then the price is p. If I uh, ask, for, uh, there is no uh, no point for me to uh, asking a lower price. And if I ask a high, higher price, then nobody's going to want to buy it. So you can imagine that it's a small country and sells at the international stage. Uh, the goal of that is, again, to allow us to not think too much about uh, the consumer side or consumer surplus. We can just focus on the industry by itself and the, the, yeah, the, the fisherman's profit. By the way, so what is the fisherman's profit? Well, it's it's going to be a, fun a function of the stock of fish. And what is it? Well, it's easy. It's P, uh, price of fish, times how many fish do I catch today? Well, it's uh, alpha times S. Uh, and what did I? What did it cost me to uh, fish these fishes? Well, it cost me. C. All right. So it's uh, it's quite a simple profit function. And now uh, the question we can ask is: uh, What are the total catches in a day? Well, it's a function of the total uh, boats in in the ocean. Uh, so it's uh, we're going to uh, label this H capital H for harvest, and it's going to be well alpha times B times S. So alpha S is the total catches of one fishing boat in the day, and B is the total number of boat of boats. Uh, finally, we have to assume that uh, if S equals K, so if there is the total number of fishes in the ocean, then fishing should at least be profitable for a fisherman. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means that the profit, if uh, the stock of fish is k, should be larger than, uh, than zero. So that means that p alpha k minus c should be larger than zero. All right, otherwise I don't have any model, otherwise nobody wants to fish. And of course, k can be smaller, so it's possible that at some point the profit is too low and then people don't want to fish anymore. Okay, so let's go to the steady state fish stock. So we have the natural growth rate and the catches that allows us to find the net growth rate of the stock of fish. Uh, so it's in discrete uh, time. So we write it delta st, which is equal to well, how many fish would, uh, how many new fish would enter the, the ocean without uh, fishing. So that's tau of st minus how many fishes are caught. So that's harvest at time t and now we just substitute what we what we know about these two so it's delta st equals two uh, so it's r st times one minus st divided by k minus and now this is alpha b and uh, boats is not a constant. It's uh, some state variable that's going to be described by the model. So it's going to change over time. So we have to add boat at time t and stock at time t. So the interpretation of this uh, harvesting function is 
quite intuitive. So of course, it's proportional to how many boats are trying to catch fishes. But also, why is it proportional to st and not just a constant, for instance? Well, it uh, simply reflects something quite intuitive, is that if the sea is, uh, sea is full of fish, then it takes uh, very little effort to catch all the fishes you want in your boat. Uh, whereas if uh, it, uh, the, fish, the sea is almost empty, then of course it's going to take a while to fill, fill up your boat. Uh, so last piece of the, uh, of the puzzle we, uh, we now do is uh, find out what is the steady state. Definition of the steady state, when nothing moves. So here, uh, bo uh, B does not have to move, but of course also uh, S does not have to move. So delta S must be uh, stable. So we write it this way. So delta S and then it's star because that's the change at the steady state is of course by definition zero. So now we can just uh, substitute what uh, what we have here. So R, so I can just write that this part has to be equal to that part. So R S star times one minus S star K has to be equal. So this is the natural growth rate has to be equal to alpha b star s star, the harvesting. And uh, what's neat here is uh, we get a nice cancellation because the number of fish in the ocean determines how many new fish are born every year. And the number of fish in the ocean determines the number of catches. So we can simply divide one by the other. So if I want to simplify this, I get the following. So uh, it's, I can divide by S star on each side. Now you, I get only one S star here. So that's what I'm after. But of course, it's going to be an implicit function because B star is still there. Uh, we're going to have to look at what happens in the industry to know uh, how the number of boats is going to change. Uh, so but now what, what I can do is, now let's just divide by R on every side, on each side. Multiply by minus one. And then I can uh, add one on each side. So one, and then this one disappears. And then let's just multiply by key everywhere. So, key. So here I get S star, uh, the steady state stock of fish, uh, that has to be equal to K times one minus alpha beta star divided by R. Uh, so, uh, well, actually what we can say basically is that S star is not uh, uh, determined totally. It's a function of B star. So we could even write S star of B star. But of course, our goal is to find the, find out the, solve the, the whole problem. And uh, how do we interpret this? Well, it has some uh, intuitive interpretations. So, um, well, you can think about it in your head for a few seconds. So, uh, how does is start? Uh, well, first of all, how is S related to B? Well, it's an inverse relation because there's a minus there. So the more uh, boats are trying to fish, then the lower uh, the stock of fish uh, in the steady state will be. Uh, the uh, higher the, the um, uh, steady state quantity uh, K, the carrying cap capacity is, the higher S is going to be. Alpha, it's the efficiency of fishing. So uh, each if uh, each boat catch, uh, catches a lot of fish, then again, the steady state number of fish is going to be lower. And finally, R is the reproduct, uh, the how quick the fishes reproduce. And there's a minus, but it's divided there. So the two of them makes uh, for a positive function. So uh, of course, the more fishes are able to reproduce quickly, like if they are sardines, I don't know, then uh, still we're, even if there's a lot of fishing, then we're going to have uh, 
uh, higher quantity of uh, steady state uh, fishes in the ocean.